Right, we've spoken with Tristan about what he thinks of a new bike, but I just thought I'd talk with Tristan about what he thinks about a new sport. It's the switchover from mountain biking to road. That's nothing new. It's been done a million times before. Are you ever going to go back to racing mountain bikes? I don't think I'll ever stop. I definitely won't reach the uh, heights that I wanted to. Uh, I don't think I'll be as good on the mountain bike as I am on the road either. Uh, so the, the mountain bike team I rode for, the, the Torque team, they've got a, a pretty long history of riders going to road and then having quite successful road careers. Starting with Steele Von Hoff and you know Fetchy, Luke Fetch and uh, Chris Hamilton, Jack Haig, Robbie Hucker, there's actually quite a few, <laughs> uh, Jason Lowndes as well. So yeah, that, that, uh, that started it, seeing those boys go on to, to great things and uh, the road has a, a very strong pull as far as uh, you make more money, you get more stuff, more people care, okay. which is always nice. <laughs> and mountain biking is therapy. You just uh, can lose yourself a little bit now in training. You don't feel quite so much pressure, I suppose. Yeah, well, mountain biking, I, I enjoy it. There's, there's nothing more fun than, uh, you know, nailing the perfect cross-country race. And cross-country racing is very different to what a lot of, you know, your weekend warriors would do if you know they race the mont or something like that uh a proper olympic cross-country race is uh super intense and uh it's uh something very rewarding if you get it right <laughs> talk to me about life on the nrs it was um there was a halcyon time not that long ago where it was uh, pretty much everywhere it was talk of the town there was media there was teams coming out of the woodwork and now it's sort of gone back to a little bit of a secret society or not yes i mean uh, the i've done two last year i did a full season of nrs where i did every tour and that was what uh sort of gave me a chance at Benelong. and then to do it as part of Benelong, you know where you get looked after quite well and things like that i guess the the biggest thing i noticed was at launceston crit where i crashed from first place in the last corner and uh, no one knew about it because no one was watching because no one really cared. <laughs> so I know that's very negative to say um, and we're lucky that a lot of people in the sport are in it for love, otherwise they probably wouldn't do it. But hopefully, you know, it's, uh, it builds back up again and it gives riders more of a chance to actually one day get a paycheck from racing bikes. I've been saying for a long time, it was, and I guess highlighted by the fact that um had a few bike riders come and go and they sort of call quits to their career a little bit earlier just because you can doesn't mean you should and uh, by that I mean uh, you might be a great bike rider and win a time trial world championship as an under 23 but it doesn't mean you have to keep racing all your life um, you can race you're doing well you've got the right support do you see it being uh, a long-term thing for you at age 23 are you now part of the, the domestic racing mm. infrastructure or what do you do from here? That's a great question. So I probably have till I'm about 25 to make money or I'll have to retire from bike racing and get a proper job. Um, unfortunately, that's just just the way it is. Um, just for, you know, an average family, nothing special, nothing terrible, so lucky. Uh, but yeah, at some stage I will have to get a proper job if I don't get paid from riding bikes. And the NRS is definitely not sufficient. For example, at King Valley, uh, I had quite a successful tour, uh, coming third, fourth, first and first, obviously winning GC. Uh, and I took home $217. You know, as an event, that event probably cost the team maybe oh, between seven or $9,000. So, uh, you know, it, it's a negative thing to harp on about prize money, but uh, if you want to keep us racing NRS, you should probably up it. <laughs> like, yeah, that was, that didn't cover my food bill that weekend. Yeah. Oh, there's a show, eat, eat more for less. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's it's it's slim pickings, you know. You, 
I'd be better off racing Heffron once a week, you know, which is... I, I make more money from Heffron. It's better organised. The racing's better. <laughs> it's good to speak your mind. And I, th I mean, we're not trying to be negative here. We're just trying just to... Just being honest. State the fact. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, cycling um, has a tradition of... Um, of sycophant commentary, to be frank. And that is to say, it's almost necessary to be talking something up when it's still pretty average. Hmm. Um, oh, well, I think a lot of people, uh, you know, I'm, I try to be po as positive as possible and don't like people that are negative for no reason. And, I mean, like I said, without people in the sport that love it, it'd be pretty slim pickings. I mean, you know, Andrew and Steve, they've ran the team that I ride for now for the last 17 years. And I can tell you, they haven't made any money from it. Like, they get a kick out of seeing riders, you know, like a recent one, Jack Haig or Chris Hamilton, you know, come up from mountain biking and learn road, learn the craft, and now they're both, you know, well toured, both done a couple of grandies each, both taking home a nice paycheck. And, they're, you know, they've gone from boys to men and they're doing well for themselves. And I think that's the reason why people like that do it. But uh, it costs a lot of time, money and effort. You've talked up Heffron, and I, it is a little... I mean, I think it's the um, the local club scene which is really keeping cycling alive. I know that there's a lot of interest on a Tuesday evening here. People come down, there's a good vibe, people are enjoying it. What's um, What do you get out of it, apart from a, a hit out in, in a... Oh, in well, a I mean, like, for, obviously, for one, it's awesome training because it's a handicap crit, which is something different, so you don't get much negative uh, racing here because everyone's, you know, chopping in for the win. So I race Heffron here and I race Sutherland on Friday night and both those clubs and criteriums, uh, a lot of work goes in and they're both amazing. I recommend them both. Both are fierce racing, which I love. It's a, there's probably better ways to get from A to B than on a bike. <laughs> like I love going fast and the only reason I ride a bike is to race and to win. That's, that's my reason for doing it. Uh, yeah, Heffron's unique, you know, the, the concrete roads, the roughness, the corners, it's almost made for me. I do enjoy it. And, uh, you know, taking home $300 when you get up for the win, it's just uh, the uh, icing on the pudding. Just take me back to that first time you raced the crit. Were you anxious as hell the first time? Uh, so my first crit wasn't actually a, uh, a proper crit. It wasn't club run or anything. We used to have a training criterion uh, when I lived down at Jervis Bay that was uh, put on by the local... The bloke that owned the local bike shop, he used to get a bunch of us together and we'd, you know, go beat up on each other for half an hour around the end block that was quiet. Uh, and then I started racing at the Nara Velo Club. And they've got some awesome little tracks out there out of uh, the uh, business estate. So that they were awesome, well run and safe and actually a really good field back then. There was uh, Mark Fenner and... Uh, Damien Mason and a few other guys, uh, Tarmac and that. So a few, you know, five or six NRS guys. And I was a first year under 19 mountain biker, so I got dropped a lot. But uh, I think, uh, yeah, it, if you've got good people racing that don't take it too seriously and encourage other people to beat them almost, you know, if, if the older guys at the racing scene get pumped when they see a younger bloke train hard and beat them, I think that's very important. Yeah. To the 15-year-old who's considering AFL or uh, cycling as a sport into their late teens, what do you tell them? I'll probably just watch the news. And you watch anyone from AFL or NRL and like, uh, just leave the cocaine at home. It's not that hard. Like, uh, yeah, no, I have probably zero respect for any of them. They're not athletes. Um, if you want to be a proper athlete, and uh, if you want to really work hard, I reckon it's worth it. And um, it's a lot better than ending up on 60 Minutes, on drugs charges and whatnot, being a scummy NRL player. But I thought cycling was the one with a drug reputation. No, I don't... I've Personally, I've never been approached... Anyone's tried to sell me performance-enhancing drugs. I wouldn't even know where to buy it. Um, and honestly, probably one of the things I've noticed in cycling is that anyone can do it. If you were even 25 kilos overweight and had enough money, time and effort to put into training and racing, I reckon you could be a successful racer. Yeah. 
I don't think it's that hard. Well, obviously the time, money and effort is the hard part, but if you put it in, you'll be good. <laughs> And what floats your boat in training? Are you a numbers man? Uh, a little bit, probably. Yeah, I do. I've kind of, so been part of FTP for about five or six years, which is run by Mark Fanner. I've been coached by Fans for a long time, and then for the last two years, Kate Perry. Uh, both amazing coaches, both awesome. So I've got to know the numbers game really well, and I understand it, which is helpful. Uh, probably my honey hole session would be like two hours with efforts. You know, I, I really like, you know, over and unders, whether they're 30 30s or 40 20s. One of my favorite sessions is probably to do out here at Heffron. Uh, I prefer to do it on a non windy day, otherwise, it's a bit tricky. But uh, you do two laps at FTP and then you sprint from the bush to the finish line, and that'll give you about six to six and a half minutes of uh, effort with a sprint which uh, I reckon is key to sprint at the end of your efforts, especially if you're a sprinter. <laughs> okay. And then uh, after those hard laps, you're just cruising? or what? Yeah, you just do a lap off. And then... Yeah, so if think... it, if you say it's three laps, the whole effort, you do two laps at FTP and you sprint to the line on the last one and then you just cruise around for one lap and you start again at the finish line. Uh, and the good thing about Heffron being being a handicap is that uh, if you fancy your, your, your chances to win, then you, you better put in in the chop and uh, do lots of strong turns and make sure that A grade gets up because it's never a sure thing. Yeah, it makes it fun, makes yeah, it interesting. Absolutely, it does. And you can uh, if you you're not interested in winning and just want to hammer yourself for forty minutes, then come along and help the chop get up. <laughs> And the vibe in the Sydney cycling community, is it, um, is it vibrant or do you have much to do with it or you just keep to yourself? Well, talk it's, pretty, to it's pretty interesting, Sydney, actually. I, I lived in Canberra for two years, which is a super close community. Uh, you know, for example, got an awesome group chat on Messenger. I tried to make a group chat once for uh, Sutherland Shire Wollongong and no one spoke to each other. <laughs> so... Uh, I think it's, it's Sydney's a bit broken up. You've definitely got like the North Shore, you know, down south in the Shire and then Wollongong. Uh, I'm in the Shire, so I train mostly with Johnny Odoms and Benny Metcalf. Worked with uh, Michelle Ferris as well, so that was cool. And uh, yeah, do most of my training through the Nasho. I don't really go further north than Cronulla. Go down there for a coffee sometimes, that's about it. But otherwise, yeah, through the, the Nasho and, and south to Wollongong, you know, the bigger loop down to uh, Jamboree and back up. That's a big day. That's about it. Super negative to say, but Sydney is by far the most terrible place to ride a bike. Whoever's in charge of uh, getting the, you know, the bike paths and the infrastructure correct, that there is a huge volume of people that have bikes and want to ride bikes in Sydney. It's just too dangerous. And I don't blame people for not riding bikes here. And obviously lack of infrastructure you know, it makes road rage and things like that even worse because, you know, you'll soon find out just driving a car in Sydney's hard enough, let alone driving a car when there's bikes on the road. It makes it tough. Uh, but I'm pretty lucky in the Shire. We have uh, some awesome mountain bike trails and lots of them. And even, you know, if, you want to, if you've got a CX bike, heaps of just fire roads, heaps of single track. And, you know, the, you further you go south the more there is down Wollongong there's heaps and then when you get down to Nowra and Jervis Bay there's even more so pretty sport for sure if you've got a big business and you want to sponsor some cycling teams do it that'd be good the more money in cycling the better after spending some time in in Belgium this year where cycling is the you know the cultural sport and everyone gets behind it uh, I think it's only a good thing to have proper athlete and role models that are actually decent people doing the right thing that work hard. Uh, I think that can only be good for a culture and a country. Cool. Thanks for having a chat. No worries, thank you. <laughs> Cheers, mate. <laughs>